because I wanted to focus on the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But uh, the last thing I preached on was Revelation chapter 9, the verses 1 through... Oh, I think I got so far as to get to, uh, to verse um, 10. And what we saw was the bottomless pit. We went through the bottomless pit and we went through uh, the helicopters. Kind of looked like that John might have been trying to describe a helicopter. So we're going to pick it back up at Revelation chapter 9. We're going to pick it back up there at verse 11. And let's just read that and then we'll go to the Lord in prayer. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just come to you humbly. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, Father, I do pray, Lord, your Holy Spirit will lead us, guide us, direct us this morning into all truth, Lord God. I pray, Father, that... You'll move among us, Lord God. I pray, Father, these people here to come out here this morning, Lord. They want to hear your word, Lord. I pray your word will come off the page for them, Lord. Help them to understand it, Lord. Help us to grasp it. Help us to understand uh, what you have written down here through John, Lord God. I pray, Father, that we'll have the wisdom to understand it. And, Lord, I pray, Father, that if there's somebody who needs to sound my voice that doesn't know Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, Father, I pray, Lord, as we give the invitation, they'll come on down here and get saved, Lord. And I thank you for your free salvation we have in Jesus Christ. It's simple by faith. And I thank you for that, Lord. In Jesus Christ, holy name I pray. Amen. So there at verse 11, it gives us the name of that king over those, over those scorpion-type creatures that we described look kind of like uh, uh, helicopters out of the bottomless pit. It says it has a king over them, verse 11. And it's, the angels, it's the king over the bottomless pit. And that king's name, that angel's name is Abaddon in the Hebrew. And the Greek t name is Apollyon. Now, that name means destroyer. What's interesting about that is during the Exodus story, whenever Israel was going to be brought out by God at the last plague, he's going to kill every firstborn. And he said, I want you to take this lamb, and I want you to kill this lamb, and I want you to put the blood over the doorposts and on the side lentils. And when I send that angel, that angel sees that blood, it'll know that's been there, and that'll be a token between me and you. You get behind that door, and you'll be saved, and it, you won't die. That angel that was sent, God calls that angel the destroyer. It's kind of interesting. Here it's being called the destroyer in the Hebrew tongue, Abaddon, and in Greek tongue, Apollyon. It might be the same, same angel from way back in the Exodus story. So verse 12, one woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded. Now this is a sixth trumpet being sounded. And I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. This is up in heaven. This voice comes out from the altar. Verse 14, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. The great river Euphrates. So the river Euphrates, here's Israel. This is a modern day map. Here, here's Israel. Here's Jerusalem right here. Here's Turkey. Here's Armenia, here's Iran, here's Iraq, that's Iran, here's Iraq, Syria, Jordan, you're hearing all, Saudi Arabia, you hear all about this in the news. Here's Egypt, here's that exodus I was telling you about that happened. Well, this great river Euphrates starts right up here at the North Turkey, and it runs, it runs all the way down, all the way down, and it, then it comes down into the, into the Persian Gulf. It runs about 1,700 miles long. It begins up here in northern Turkey. It empties into the Persian Gulf. It's about 94% of the water comes from this area right up in here, and it comes in here. But there's supposedly, and I say supposedly because you know it's true, there's four angels bound in this river today. And here's a picture of modern-day river of the river Euphrates. God's got four angels bound in that river, and he's waiting to loose them. Look at verse 15. And the four angels which were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month, and a year for to slay the third part of men. They're going to come out of this, they're going to come out of this river. He's got them bound up. It's kind of interesting. So this man here is, it might be hard to tell, but there's a man sitting here by a booth, and here's another picture of the great river Euphrates. Uh, those angels are bound somewhere in that river. And there's going to come a time where God's going to loose those angels. He's going to set them loose, and they're, they're, going, to come, they're, going, to set, they're going to slay a third part of men, is what verse 15. And listen to me, guys. I say this all the time. The book of Revelation, it's not that hard to understand. What makes it hard is to believe it. 
Because I mean, anybody, almost anybody in this room can understand. There's a river. They know what an angel is. They know what a river is. They know what it is to be bound up, and they know what it is to be cut loose. It's right there. It's just, but do you believe this? Do you believe that God's got angels bound up? That's what he says. He's gonna, he hasn't bound up, and he's going to loose them. He's going to loose them to slay a third part of men. Now, one of the interesting things about the river Euphrates that's been going on the last 50 years is they started building dams on the river Euphrates over in Turkey. Here's another picture of the river Euphrates, and they're kind of damming it up a little bit. But they're building this massive dam. Turkey is the country of Turkey. And as they build these massive dams, what's happening is they're starting to cut off the water all the way down. Because you remember, this water starts up here, so they're building these dams up here in Turkey. And what's happening is as they build these dams, they're starting to control the water flow all the way down to Euphrates. And this water flow, as it's controlling the water flow, it's causing trouble for Syria and Iraq. It's, that's their water. And, and they're controlling it up here in Turkey, and it's starting to cause a lot of trouble in, uh, in, 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 with the relations of other countries. So here's some modern-day stories. This is 2017. Confirmed, Turkey using the Euphrates River as a weapon versus Syria and Iraq. So they don't like what Iraq and Syria does, so they just turn off their water. This is 2017, thirst wars. Turkey applies political pressure by cutting off water to Syria. The Syrian Kurdish media has recently reported that Turkey has cut off the flow of the Euphrates River into Syria, depriving the nation of one of its primary sources of water. One of the latest, uh, here's a 2014 story. Turkey's control of the Euphrates might lead to disaster, and it has started leading to disaster. So they're still to this day fighting over that. But you're noticing that this dam has been built up, and when they built the dam up, they're starting to cut it off. So uh, there's a possibility those angels would have control of those dams maybe, and that's where they shut that water off. Uh, look at Revelation. No, look at Ver Revelation 16. I mean, Re uh, verse 16. Then I'll show you something. And the number of the army that the horsemen were too... The number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand, and I heard the number of them. So that's the very next verse. So when you're reading, if you're reading that, well, let's read that again. Verse 15. Look at verse 15. So you, it, the Bible's talking about these angels are bound in, in, in Euphrates. And then look at verse 15. And the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. God's got that day. He knows exactly what hour he's going to do it. To slay the third part of men. And then verse 16, and the number of the army, what army? <laughs> you see how hard it is sometimes to study the book of Revelation? Because when you're reading that, you're like, okay, what army? It just says the, ar the number of the army, like he's talking like he already has talked about it before. That's what makes it so hard to study the book of Revelation. You've got to put scripture to scripture. Now remember, what we, what we learned at the beginning of this teaching on the book of Revelation is the book of Revelation it's just the story of the second coming of Jesus Christ four times. He, he retells the story four times. Remember, the first coming of Jesus Christ is told four times in the back, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So in the book of Revelation, what you're going to have is the story of the, Je of the, story of the second coming of Jesus Christ is told over and over four times. There's four times he tells it. First, he tells it through, four, through seven seals. Then it's going to be seven trumpets. Then it's going to be seven personages, and then finally it'll be seven vials. And those are the four tellings of the second coming of Jesus Christ. So what you've got to do is you've got to go, just like when you study the book of Matthew, sometimes Matthew will mention something that the, the uh, Gospel of Luke doesn't. And sometimes you'll go to the Gospel of Luke and say, oh, okay, that helps me to understand why he, what he was saying here in the book of Matthew. You've got to take them all together. It's an account. There's a famous guy, I can't think of it, it was Wallace. His name is Wallace. He was a detective for 30 years in the LAPD. He was an atheist, and he got saved. And how he got saved was he started studying the resurrection account of Jesus Christ because he didn't believe in it, but his wife got saved. So he started studying it. He's going to prove to her as a lie. And as a detective, he said, this is an actual account of what happened. Because when you have an actual account, you can't just take one guy's word. You interview this person, you interview that person, you interview that person, you interview that person. And when they see a wreck, one person sees the car do one thing, one person sees another car do another thing. They're not lying. they got different perspectives. That's the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They have different perspectives. But when you put them together, it makes one picture of what really happened to Jesus Christ. That led him to get saved. 
And he's, he's, went on, he's went on all over America teaching and preaching about the truth of the gospel resurrection. That's what's going on in Revelation. It's the second coming of Jesus Christ, so there's four different accounts being told. So to get to know what's happening here in verse 16 with the number of the army of the horsemen, turn to Revelation 16, verse 12. Revelation 16, verse 12, and it explains what's going on here. You've got to have Revelation 16, 12 to understand what, what he's talking about here. Now, this is the telling of the vials. This is the seven vials. So now we're at the sixth angel. It's going to pour out that sixth vial, which lines up with the sixth trumpet that we're reading. You compare scripture to scripture. Verse 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. There it is again. And the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So the whole thing... These angels are loosed, and when they're loosed, let me go back. When these angels are loosed out of this river Euphrates, they're going to dry this river Euphrates up for kings that are coming from the east. That's what Revelation 16, 12 says. That's the army back in Revelation 9. That's so go back to Revelation chapter 9. So that's what, what the Bible's saying is he's, it's, it's, you put the scripture, scripture, and it's making ways for the, king, for the kings of the east. He's drying up. And Revelation 9, 16 tells us, and the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000,000. That's 200 million. So the, the kings of the east, this is a world map, of course. Here's America. Way, this little bit dot right here is Israel that the whole world's watching right now. There's Ukraine that's in the news today. The Ukraine nation that Russia's invading that you hear in the news today. There's Ukraine. That little country, Germany, that's what started World War II for this whole world this little country right here. But for the kings of the east, here's Turkey, and that water runs down here to the Gulf. They're drank, the, 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 that river is going to be dried up for the way of the kings of the east. That's China and Russia. And maybe India gets involved, but for sure China and Russia. Who's in the news today? China and Russia. What's interesting about this, it says the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 that's 200 million. There's only one nation that can raise an army like that today, the nation of China. Who, are we, who really are we at war with? It's Russia and China. We're at a cold war with Russia and China. This nation right here can raise a 200 million man army right now. If you get them together and you get Russia together and they come over here and they're coming right over here, and what the, what the reason they're doing it, and, we'll, and I'll show you this in the Bible, is because they're coming over here to the battle of Armageddon. Because Jesus Christ is coming back. He's bringing these, these armies over here, and Jesus Christ is going to come back, and the battle of Armageddon takes place. And we'll get into that when we get that far. Here's a world population chart. Here's a world population. So it starts here in 1900. It's right under 2 billion. See that? And then it goes up, 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 and you get here. Here's 2025. We're sitting at 2023, so you can go back a couple of dots here. Go right about here. So right about 8 billion people today. 8 billion people. See at the end of verse 15, it says that, that those angels are loose to slay the third part of men. One-third of 8 billion, what, 2.7 billion going to be wiped out during the tribulation period, at least. Here's a world population chart. Now, I'm pointing this out because it's very important for you to see that I'm not pulling your wool over your eyes. See this right here? It says that's the United Nations. Not Christian, amen. World population prospects. This was done and revised in 1998. And what they do is they take from 1750 and they estimate it and they, they, got the, they got the census, and they see where, you see how it's a, a small line, here's 2 billion right here? This line runs, this is 2 billion people. Notice how we're way under 2 billion people, way under 1 billion. And then all of a sudden you get up here, and then it starts just skyrocketing. It's like, a, it's like compound interest or anything else. Once you start doubling this, and then doubling it, and then doubling it, and then doubling it, and then doubling it, and then you get to one billion, you double that, two billion, two billion, to four billion, four billion, to eight billion, it goes like that. 
The more you have, the more people you have. The more people you have, the more people you have. It just starts, that's why, that, that's why this chart goes like this. Whoop. Here's the problem. <laughs> this, chart stop, this chart stops at 1750. You can see this line, and see how it's going down, 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 down. This is what they don't want you to know. And what every mathematician knows, if you put pencil to paper, starting up here, here's a population, six billion, you go down, it goes down, it goes down, and then see how it starts going down, down. And when you trace that back, that traces right back to about 4,400 years ago when eight people stepped off an ark. The world population chart, what it shows you guys, it shows you, if you follow that line back, that there had not been that many people here. If you look at this line right here, this is less than one billion. There's like, there's like a quarter of this, about 500 million, a little more than 500 million people living on the world at that time in 1700s. So you take another 1700 years away, there were probably, they estimated like 100 million, 200 million people. How could you imagine there'd be a 200 million man army? When John's writing this, there's nobody who has ever had an army like that or ever could ever dream of having a big enough army like that. 2,000 years ago. Guys, this book's way ahead of you. He wrote this 2,000 years ago saying it's going to be a 200 million man army. Impossible. They thought it was impossible in 1700. It sounded impossible in 1900. A 200 million man army? There's not even barely a billion people. 200 million men? That's impossible. And look at, well, lo and behold... We got China today, and they can raise a 200 million man army like that. <laughs> There's a billion people living in China. People ask me, why do you believe this book? Stuff like that. Why else do you believe this book? Because when I look at the United Nations chart, it goes down, 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 and what they don't show you is that it eventually goes down to where eight people stepped off an ark in Noah's time after the flood. So you take those, and you multiply, 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 and then you, here you go. There's estimated to be about a quarter of a billion people at the time of Christ, and then go up, 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 and then. See, I got a book at home called Science Versus Evolution. True Science Versus Evolutionary Theory. And in this book, this is one of the things I've got written. I, I put it up here for you. If in contrast, the human race had been on the earth for one million years, so they think the human race, in one way or form or another, as a homo sapien, if whatever, they have these different names for the human race. It's been around for one million years. As evolutionaries declare, even with the very low growth rate of one one hundredth, that's real, real low. Look, annually, the resulting population by the time of Christ would have been two to the tenth, forty-third power, which is, it's, what you're doing is you're taking two and putting forty-three tens behind it. For, I mean, forty-three zeros behind it, excuse me. That's a big... Huge number. How, much, how, much, how big a number is that? A thousand solar systems with nine planets like ours could barely hold that many people. Packed. Guys, we hadn't been on this earth for millions of years. This Bible says we've been on this earth about 6,000 years. You know what true science tells you? The same thing this book tells you. You've been on this earth about 6,000 years. You know how you know that? The population. This chart right here tells you that. Pretty amazing. You got an amazing book right here, guys. I'll never forget it. Let's continue on. China can raise a 200 million man army in verse 17. And I thus I saw the horses and the vision and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. And out of the mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. Some strange things there. Some strange things. So let's see if we can break this down there in verse 17. And thus I saw the horses in the vision. So he's seen this as a vision, notice. And them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, that, that's red. And of jacent, that's a dark blue. And of brimstone, that's going to be yellowish. And the heads of the horses were as heads of lions. So what's interesting is, knowing that China and Russia 
or the kings in the east, or look, appear to be the kings in the east. What's interesting is to know that those, are, those, those colors are mentioned, red and yellow and dark blue. And the flag for China, of course, is red and yellow. The flag for the Soviet Union is red and yellow. Do you know what two countries have been doing war games together and been training together since 2004? Russia and China. Since 2004, Russia and China have been training together. What are they getting ready for? Well, a lot of people think they're getting ready to come over here and take, it, take care of America, the thorn in their side. I think they're getting ready for God to use them in the Battle of Armageddon. And if you see the military uniforms of the Chinese government, of the Chinese army, it's blue. It's a dark blue. So you have there in Revelation 17, it says that them having blessed plates of fire, reds, Jason, dark blue, brimstone, yellow. But notice it says the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths, mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. Very strange. Very strange indeed. But it reminds me when you see a lion breathing fire, what that reminds me of is a Chinese dragon. So a Chinese dragon, and you see here's a Chinese dragon. Here's how a Chinese dragon is usually portrayed, just like this. It's got the head of a lion, and it breathes smoke and fire. It's a Chinese dragon. We were down at, we were up in Carrollton around... Uh, a Chinese uh, a Oriental uh, marketplace, and they had that. They had the. It was a New Year, and they had those. They had this kind of. You remember that, Kathy? And they had the. And they had the person who was inside this costume, and they had this big old head. It looked like a big old lion, and they were dancing around. Had a long trailing tail, tail like that. That's a Chinese dragon. And it says here. It says, at the middle of verse seventeen, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. But what's interesting is that these lions out of their mouths issued fire, smoke, and brimstone. It's almost a type of a Chinese dragon, which is associated, of course, with China and Russia. So all this modern-day stuff, you turn on the news and your Bible's running right along with what the news says is going on. Could this be tanks? Might be tanks. I don't know. Some people think this might be tanks. I thought I'd throw this up here for you guys. Verse 18. By these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke, and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. Verse 19, for their powers in their mouth, and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents. Notice, remember what I preached on last time. When the Bible says like unto, it doesn't say it's a serpent, but it's like unto. Like, he's seeing this 2,000 years ago, and he goes, what is that like? That's like a, it's like a tail, that tail is like a serpent. For their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads, and with them they do hurt. Verse 20, uh, ver, that, that's, that's it right there. Let's stop there. So some people speculate that this might, he might be trying to describe a modern day tank. Like last time I preached, I was trying to show you how it looks like he might be describing a modern day helicopter. So he might be describing a modern day tank firing out. Like he's saying here that it says it's, the tails were like unto serpents. See, it has the head, there's the tail. If he's trying to describe it, and he says, well, he says, it says that the mouse issued fire, smoke, and brimstone. Might be, might not be. I don't know. That's a strange creature being described there with the head of a lion having a tail like a serpent and fire and brimstone coming out. Might be a tank. I think it's interesting that the Ukrainian president, what's his name, Zelensky? Or he's, what's he telling America he needs right now? Tanks. If we have tanks, we'll win the war. Tanks, tanks. That's what he's saying. It kind of brought this to mind. What's going on here? I don't know, guys. I'm not saying for sure that's what John is seeing, but just it's, that's what some people speculate, so I thought I'd throw it up here on this transparency. Let's, let's finish this off. Look at verse 20. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Here's the great truth you need to know this morning. Verse 20 says, They repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils. If you're not worshiping Jesus Christ, you're worshiping a devil. If you're not worshiping Jesus Christ, you're worshiping a devil. Any worship outside of Jesus Christ is a worshiping a devil. Or devils. See that plural in there? And idols of gold 
and silver. Who worships gold and silver today? Anybody that's worshiping the money in their back pocket? You're worshiping your bank account? You're worshiping your job? And brass and stone, that'd be a car, a house. And of wood, that's a house, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. It said they repented not. And then verse 21, Re neither repented they of their murders, nor their sorceries, nor their fornication, nor their thefts. Notice in verse 20 and 21, the main word there is repented. Repented means you're going this way, and you turn around. It's just a turning around. And Jesus Christ said, unless you repent, you shall likewise perish. Repentance is saying, I'm going away from God, and now I'm turning to God. I used to think this way, but now I'm repenting, and I'm thinking this way. And they repented not of their works. Everybody in this room needs to repent to Jesus Christ. There should be a time in your life where you repent and say, I was going this way, now I'm going to turn and go back to Jesus Christ and go to Jesus Christ and know I need to have my sins accounted for. Neither repented they of their, look, murders, nor their sorceries. That word sorcery, that word in the Greek, is that word sorcery is translated from pharmacia, which is where we get the name pharmacy, like drugs. Talking about drugs, drug use, nor their sorcery, their drug use, nor their fornication. That's any kind of sexual activity outside of marriage, nor their thefts. If you don't get saved today, if you're not saved in here this morning, and Jesus Christ comes tonight, and he could, and rapture us out of here, and take the church, and you're, you're left behind, you're going to be left with a bunch of murdering, Dope-headed, fornicating thieves. That's what the Bible just described right there. Sounds like modern-day uh, America. Not much different now. What we're dealing with now, right? If you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, I'm going to ask you why not. I showed you just, this is just maybe, what, 15 verses? And I've already shown you using 15 and showing you, some, showing you some evidence that this Bible's real. And as we go through the rest of this revelation, it's going to get worse and worse. And you know, it's, going to, it's going to be literal hell break loose on this earth as we go through these different chapters. We haven't even got to the mark of the beast. We haven't even got to the Antichrist. We haven't even got to any of that. Without Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, when he comes back to get his bride, when he comes back to get what belongs to him, which is everybody that's in this room that's saved, if you're in here and you don't know him, you're going to be left behind. And when you're left behind, that's, this is what you're going to go through, all this hell right here. It'll be too late. It'll be too late. It'll be too late. I can't encourage you enough, when we give this invitation, I'm about to give one to make a decision for Jesus Christ. Stop playing around. I've been studying the book of Revelation since the early 90s. And you know what I found out? As I've studied the book of Revelation since the early 90s is, every year this, the, the news media and the world, they get closer to this book. It's amazing. So like in the early 90s, I read in the early 90s, it says they're going to have their heads cut off. I'm like, who, who cuts people's heads off? That's a, so in my mind, I'm thinking, it's like a guillotine, like, there's a guillotine, and they get their heads cut off by a guillotine, like in the French Revolution or whatever, you know? Well, in 2023, who, who in the world cuts people's heads off? Muslims. Radical Islam. You see it on TV all the time. And now, in the 90s, Islam, Islam was a religion, but nobody talked about it. Nobody, but now, Islam is in the forefront. Muslims are in the forefront of everything that's going on in the world, religiously and politically. And with Israel. And you start seeing, and, and when I come to this book of Revelation, stuff that didn't make sense, I'm like, oh, I get it now. And you know what I found out? This book's way ahead of me. <laughs> and when I'm sitting here saying, this might be a tank, this might be a tank, it probably is not a tank. And if the Lord tarries and you give me a couple more years, we might come in here and say, oh, I know what that is now. I know exactly what that is now. See, when I studied this in the 90s, I seen where it says they seek death and, and they shall not find them. See that in verse, look at uh, chapter 9, verse 6. Some of y'all weren't in here for this, so I'll, I'll say this real quick. 
Revelation chapter 9, verse 6, In those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And when I first read that in the 90s, I'm like, how, how can you not die? How can you not die? And then genetic cloning came along. And they start genetic, and they're trying to genetically clone to where you can't get sick, and that if you, they're trying to genetically clone where if you get your arm cut off, your arm will grow back. If you, if you try having trouble with your heart, your heart, you lose your heart, your heart will grow back. They're trying to reproduce you like a lizard does a tail. That's what they're trying to do. And you're, I'm looking at verse 6 in the 90s. I'm like, man, this makes no sense. But in 2023, I'm like, ooh, <laughs> it's the walking dead. That's exactly what it's describing. Zombies. People who want to die but can't die. Let me finally say this. Get ready. He's coming. I'm ready. And the way I got ready was I, put, I got on my knees and I accepted Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. And the only way you're going to get ready is the same way. Get ready for him because he is coming. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for your grace and mercy, Lord God. I thank you for your words, Lord, of way, way above us, Lord God. And I thank you, Father, for him. But, Lord, I do pray, Lord, and humbly ask, Lord, if there's...